welcome back everybody to Can Hammer and this uh, work in progress special episode as promised my Forge World Bonanza so uh, anybody who knows me knows that I like Forge World stuff uh, don't ask me why I think it's because their stuff is uh, anyway other than the 30k stuff their, special, their stuff is always kind of slightly special um, and I like, uh, I never thought I would say this, but I like working with the resin and I like the chunky feel of the models, the heavier feel. And, uh, they're obviously fantastic models and a lot of times the rules are pretty good. So ever since I bought and, uh, the Mastodon, which was my first Forge World purchase, I've been hooked on Forge World resin. So, um, only appropriate that I continue to collect Forge World stuff. Um, as anybody else who knows me knows, I only buy authentic Forge World stuff. Uh, I pony up for the price and for the shipping and everything. I try and buy stuff together so I don't have to pay for the shipping. But I think you have to get to like 250 pounds or something before they'll discount you the shipping. Which is a little bit uh, greedy, but anyway, can't really complain about prices when you're talking about Forge World. So, I have here a few things that I've ordered recently that have been sitting on my hobby desk just waiting to go. And I just had to finish off my Death Army stuff. And before I start into my Destruction Army while I'm still waiting for bases. And before I get into 120 Gene Steelers, since I'm taking a bit of a 40K break, I thought I would work on my Forge World. So here's the start of the Forge World Bonanza. I have a few things here. Uh, I don't know what I'm gonna start with, probably AOS stuff, but I'll just show you what I've picked up. Uh, so this is a uh, Colossal Squig to go with my Destruction Army. And this was actually picked up for me by Chris at Adepticon at the Forge World booth. So this not actually gotten mailed to me. He just brought it in a suitcase back with him. So uh, many thanks to Chris for doing that for me. But that is a uh, Colossal Squig uh, for Age of Sigmar Destruction. That's going to go very nicely with my uh, sort of ma Monster Mash Destruction list that I'm making. One monster there. Uh, the second monster for my Monster Mash... Monster Mash Destruction List is this, and this is a Dread Worm. Um, and so that is a super cool model that I'm very much looking forward to painting. i already seen some inspiration online on how to paint this, so it looks pretty awesome. Hopefully I can replicate it as best I can. And so that and the Colossal Squig, uh, my two Thunder Tusks, and um, one more thing coming up will be part of my Monster Mash destruction list. Uh, other four drilled items I have is the final item of my Monster Mash list, which is this large box here, which is the Magma Dragon. Another very cool model that I really love to look at. And uh, that is going to be the final component of my Monster Mash destruction list. So this large box here is my Magma Dragon. So that's my AOS haul from Forge World. Let's go on to 40K. So 40K, I actually have this large box, which is a Scathatch Wraith Knight. Um, my initial idea was to just get a normal Wraith Knight. I wanted to make some Yunari allies. Um, but uh, actually, I just decided I'd just get the Scathatch Wraith Knight because it's so awesome, rules-wise and look-wise. And then if I want the D-Cannons or the Sword and Board, I can just buy those bits off eBay. Um, so, uh, that is my Scathash Wraith Knight. It's my, actually my very first Eldar model. I don't have any other Eldar models, so I won't be using it anytime soon, but I like the model of the Wraith Knight, and it seems like everybody's got to have at least one Wraith Knight. So I got my Scathash Wraith Knight there. And then finally, I have these two. For some reason, one is in a new style box, and one is in an older clan pack for whatever reason, but these are the Custodes Contempt of Dreadnoughts. The Galatus, which is the one with the shield and uh, uh, sword, and the Achilles, or Achilles, or however you pronounce it, and that's the one with the Guardian Spear. That's the cool one. But these came as a package. It was a slight discount to get both of them, so I got them both. Um, and uh, 
these are going to go into my future future project which I hope will become a reality as 8th edition rolls in which is to play Custodes as its own faction. Right now it's hard to make a viable Custodes only list because they're so expensive and at the end of the day just two wound Eternal Warrior Terminators so not that viable but hopefully with 8th edition playing pure Custodes will be a thing um, and you know what, if they made 40k rules for these two right now, I would probably play it anyway just for fun. But as of the moment, these are just 30k rules only, um, but I love the model so I bought them. And I needed these to get the free shipping. So, so that's my Forge World haul. Um, I guess that's enough to keep me busy for the time being. Um, so we're gonna get started. Alright, here we go. This is the Colossal Squig uh, that I'm going to be, well, unboxing, but it's really just... A Ziploc bag, but um, the Forgeable Ziploc bags are really good if you want to use them for bits and stuff. But uh, so let's get cracking. So, why do I like this Colossal Squig? Uh, the rules are okay, it's a little bit random as you would expect from something like a Colossal Squig, but really, I just love the model the fact that it's a giant squig. Um, I like squigs, I thought about making a complete squig army. But that's not that good, and I didn't want to paint a whole bunch of little squigs. I just wanted to paint one massive squig. So I ended up with this colossal squig, which just looks too cool, and uh, that's going to be cool. Let me just get rid of these staples here since I don't want to prick myself. Okay, so here we go. All right, what do we got here? So this is the body of the squig. This is a fist-sized piece of resin here. And it looks quite nice. In typical forge world fashion, it is extremely detailed. All the little folds here in the, uh, in the skin of the squig. And, you know, three eyes on each side. All these little dots, all the hairs at the top, the teeth. Yeah, it's fantastic, it's quite detailed. So that's one piece, and then this mold coming right off the top, which is unfortunate. But anyway, so that's one piece. I don't think there are very many pieces in this kit. So here's the bottom jaw. And with a very nicely modeled tongue and bottom teeth there. It looks like uh, some skulls stuck in between the teeth here. Some skulls in there. I don't know what that is. Is that a helmet that is chewed through? It's possibly a helmet. But uh, I don't see anything between the top teeth. So it's just stuck on the bottom teeth there. And this obviously goes in here. It won't fit right now because of that thing there. But kind of goes like this. Very cool. And two legs. So it's one leg here. Goes like this. And the other leg. Goes like this. So here we are, it looks something like this. Very cool. <laughs> that is very cool. So that's it, just four pieces. Should be pretty straightforward. Uh, an extremely large base. And the standard how to work with resin forge rule guide with the handwritten date and quality assurance from forge world so that's what i like to see and this looks like just your usual how to work with forge world resin guide of which i've seen many All right. times next up is the dread maw and this is a fantastic model that i really like the look of i saw um i was looking at ways that i might paint it and i saw i can't remember who it was online den of, Ana den of imagination it might have been who did this fantastic paint job where it looks like it's erupting and there's lava coming out at the bottom and the inside of its mouth 
is is kind of like magma um so that just looks awesome the rules are pretty decent i guess i mean it's a lot of points it's like 500 points or something but you know these, this is a monster mash so one would expect that not to have that many monsters but the model itself is fantastic so i can't wait to get it on the table this has a few more parts than the squig so we got our usual Ford World, and this was checked by such and such. There's no date on it, but. All right, so this looks like part of the base. Yeah, indeed. And so you can see here that this is very detailed, this base. Just look at the granularity in the sand and the, and the rock or whatever, and the because it busts out of the, the rock like that. And just look at the detail here. Look at that. That's crazy good. And uh, on the inside too. That's crazy good. That's one part of the base. And I think this is the other part of the base. So again, looks fantastic. Very detailed. There's a skeleton in there. Uh, rocks and stuff and it really been modeled to look like sort of plates of earth that have just been moved out of the way by this emerging monster looks fantastic and this is this side is smoother this is obviously going to be in contact with the worm so this side though had to be modeled on the inside because you'll be able to see it so this goes like this that looks awesome Here is part of the body, and that is fantastic. Look at the detail on that. That's going to be fantastic to paint, and probably extremely easy by using a dry brush. Um, yeah, that's going to be great. Look at that detail. That's crazy. Always impressed by Forge World models. Um, here it is, so again, lots of detail on those scales there. And uh, this goes together somehow, maybe something like, probably like this. Anyway, we'll figure it out later. And then this is the top here. Look at the detail in the scales there. And the eyes, very detailed, very detailed. And again on the scales at the top. There's so much detail in this model. And even the inside of the mouth, look at all the teeth. Look at that, that's fantastic. And the second part is here. This is the bottom. Again, all the teeth in there. And so this goes like this. Look at that. Oh yeah, that looks awesome. Look. Just some uh, resin fluff. And then we have here some nails and horns and stuff. And some more horns, and one of them has actually come off here. That happens. And a very large base. So, there we go. That's the Dreadmaw. Right. Magma Dragon next, the final monster in my Monster Mash destruction list. So, let's crack it open. I already unwrapped it, it was shrink wrapped. I love these forge roll boxes, they're so nice. Okay. All right, some nice shrink wrap. I'll save that stuff for later. You never know when you need shrink wrap in 40K. More shrink wrap. Possibly one of the largest bases I've ever seen. Let's figure out how big that is. All right, so this base is Hundred and sixty, hundred and sixty millimeters, hundred and sixty millimeter base. 
Boom, that is big. And then we have our four drill thing. Hey, look, it's the same dude who checked this model too. There we go. And you forgot to put a date on it again. Okay, let's move this box out of the way. So here we have our large Ziploc with this model. I thought this model, it's always hard to tell because they don't give you any size comparison of how big the models are, but I would assume that they were large, but this is probably larger than I thought. Uh, actually, this might be the same base as my Terrorgeist. I think it is, yeah, yeah. All right, so this is a wing. Here we go. Look at the uh, stip stippling detail on that skin in there. Look at that, nice. Wow, very cool. And another wing, very similar. This is part of the base, which has a leg and a footprint. Here's another part of the base, which just has a lot of rocks and stuff. I love that the bases are scenic. Save me the hassle. This is the tail. I think this is going to be super fun to paint as well. Oh, and this is the massive piece of resin here, is the main part of the body. So that's fantastic. Look at the detail on the top of this thing. It's all pebbled and stuff, and all the horns coming off. That is a fantastic model, and every horn has ridges in it. Wow, that is amazing. That is very cool. That is a chunky piece of resin. Here's my fist. That's how big that is. That is gonna be a heavy thing to lift. All right, so this looks like a foot here and there's a toe missing here. Now Forge World often gives you these tiny little things to put on. I think this foot might go here like this onto that base. Uh, if you watch me do the Morngol video, you'll know that it, it gets you to put on like a single nail. Uh, so you know like one of these would come separate and you'd have to put it on, which is a pain in the ass. So here's another foot. And here is a tree stump with a claw on it. And the tree stump has been uprooted you can see like little bits of root edge sticking out from the dirt there. That looks fantastic. Here's kind of a, a joint, an elbow or a knee. This is the underside of the mouth, looks like. This looks like whatever was on it was now missing. And this is, uh, I don't know, wing diaphragms or something like that. And it's another elbow or knee. And just looking in here, what's left, I think this is just resin junk. Don't want to throw out any parts though, but I believe this is just, yeah, resin junk in here. Okay, so this model looks fantastic. We got this here. We got uh, the bottom of the jaw, which goes like that. Then we've got wings, which kind of look like this. Super sweet. Oh, the wings probably, this part probably goes on first, something like that. And then we've got these probably go in there. Very cool. All right, that's awesome. Can't wait to First do that. Well. Open is the uh, Galatis or Galatis Contemptor. Uh, this is clamshell, and the instructions are uh, inside the back of the clamshell. So I'm just going to use this box from the Magma Dragon and put all the parts in there. So got my trusty knife. We'll get started on that. 
All right, we got it out. So here's all the parts. There looks like there are 26, 27, 30 parts to this model. Um, it's pretty detailed. I mean, look, the arm itself comes in one, two, three, four, five, six parts just for the arm assembly. Uh, it's pretty, pretty cool. Um, just have a look at a few of these parts here. So this looks like the feet. There's four feet for whatever reason. They look identical, so I'm not sure why there are four feet. Anyway, so shield, very cool. Uh, body, very cool. Back vents, the sword. And uh, so the shin guards, very detailed. Some arm and other details, joints, another shin guard, arm guard, some more armor details, and what looks like a 60 millimeter base. There we go. So very cool. I don't think that this guy's uh, as large as the Leviathan, but he seems like he might be taller than a normal Dreadnought. We'll see when we got him together, but that's very cool. So that's the Galatus. And then here we have the Ach Achilles. So it's not Achilles, it's Achilles. So Achilles or Achilles Dreadnought, which comes in the usual Forge World box. So we're going to open that up. All right, this looks quality. This is not a toy. Yes, it is. Just for adults and not for children. So here we go, Legio Custodes Contemptor Achilles Dreadnought. That looks sick. It's just like a massive Custodes basically. That looks crazy good. And this model has 43 parts. And this comes with full instructions in the usual Forge World fashion about how to assemble it. So I can only presume actually that uh, the other Dreadnought is an older kit. Um, although I not heard of it before, but and then because all the newer kits that I've done from Forge World all come with these instructions. So um, when it's complicated like this, obviously the, the Dread Maw or the Squig only has four parts, you can figure it out. But um, yeah, so this is going to be so cool. The real dilemma is Will they be holding it in two hands or bossing it one-handed like this dude? I don't know, we'll have to look at the loadouts and trying to predict what might happen in 40K. But at the end of the day, I bought these for the models and there it is. So this comes in like a little uh, sealed plastic kit. I've never seen it. Anything packaged like that from Forge World, but there you go. Similar style base. Uh, all these parts are pretty similar, I presume. I'm not going to crack them all open now, but this has come wrapped in bubble wrap, and I assume that this is the spear. And they really didn't want it bent, so I think that's why they wrapped it like this in this protective hard plastic. And yeah, so this is the spear. That is awesome. That might tell you how big the model is because this spear is five inches long. So the model is going to be at least that tall, which is awesome. I can't wait. And I really appreciate how they took effort to wrap this up so this wouldn't get Here we go, my first ever Eldar model, the Scathatch Wraith Knight. And of course my first model for Eldar has to go straight to the good stuff. So here we go. Let's open this up. Maybe I'll use. Okay. So, you know, the Wraith Knight itself is actually just a Wraith Knight model, which I didn't realize. Well, I knew you were just getting a Wraith Knight model. So here it is plastic Wraith Knight model, but it comes with the sword and the shield. Um, And it looks like it comes with the uh, the D, -B D guns. 
So that's great. I thought I had to buy that stuff off eBay later if I wanted it, but I get it all in the same package. So this is just a standard Wraith Knight kit right here. Um, this was checked in uh, at the end of January. And uh, we have a construction guide here about the Scathash Wraith Knight. So let's see. So this tells you how to assemble the Death Shroud Cannons or the Infernal Lances. Um, as well as maybe this looks like uh, special webway shunt parts. Um, and this is actually some nice colored instructions of how to assemble the Wraith Knight. Oh, and it comes with Eldar transfer sheet as well. So I don't know if a normal Wraith Knight comes with these instructions. So maybe somebody below can tell me if they have bought a normal GW, like non Forge World Wraith Knight, and tell me if these instructions come with it. But this looks like one just for the Scathatch, so pretty sweet. I bet you I could sell this on eBay. Anyway, so this is standard Wraith Knight kit. So I have all those weapons, which is fantastic because I thought I'd have to buy them. And then in the bubble wrap is a Forge World bag. And in this bag is the base. Here's the base. And then a, uh, a, tiny, a bag with some tiny little pieces here. No idea what those are right now, but they look important if they're separately bagged. And then here are the scathage parts. So this gun here, which looks a little bit warped. And uh, yeah, sort of warp jump generator. The various guns. So that looks very cool. All right, I'm so happy with that because I worked it out as the same price Basically the same price, uh, uh, taking into exchange and, and VAT exempt versus HST. So basically the same price as a normal Wraith Knight kit, but I get the Scathatch stuff, which is awesome. So um, I'm very excited about that. And uh, I think I'll have to get myself some Eldar bikes. Um, but so that's the unboxing for my Forge World haul. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, we will be uh, going on to film some of the assembly of these models, and uh, so stick with us.